my uh, screen. I hope my screen is uh, visible to everyone, right? Yes, sir. Visible, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Visible, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. And uh, so today also we we will have an a uh, what is it uh, interaction section uh, session for deep learning model. Yesterday we have covered uh, entirely about an uh, machine learning. So today we are going to start with an a uh, deep learning. Right, so we all know that uh, deep learning and uh, machine learning is a subset of AI. Because uh, now, like I think, uh, so many of them uh, studied on a today article from an uh, an university professor. So we, as a engineering college, we have an a uh, lacking of faculty for an a uh, specialized to concept. Concept in the sense, uh, in terms of uh, AI, ML, and even we are having in a data science also. So anyway, as a we, we, we as a faculty, we should learn something uh, or additional things from our faculty because we all uh, we don't stop learning from our anyone, right? So uh, so today uh, topics also very interesting. So. Let me hope for an uh, uh, interactive session from the participants also. Yeah. Uh, today topic is deep learning model for future research, right? So same thing. So uh, I am Dr. P. Chinnaswamy, working as an associate professor in Department of Computer Science Engineering in the MLR Institute of Technology. So today agenda for uh, uh, today's session is what is mean by deep learning models? What is artificial intelligence? What are the limitations of machine learning? Like, which means that why we want to go for an deep learning? And then, again, what is the definitions of deep learning in terms of ML? Then, how our deep learning models will work? And then, what are the applications of deep learning? What are the recent trends in a deep learning? And finally, so today also we have an use cases for with the help of deep learning. Then what are the tools for an deep learning? Like before starting it, like so we have an one uh, disturbance, right? So that is my WhatsApp. I'll I'll close my WhatsApp. Yeah, now fine. So these are the things we are going to like, like almost uh, nine different topics we are going to cover it for our today's session. So in the sessions, if you have an, any doubt, like uh, some concept, if you not understand it, you just stop me, stop me at any time and then ask a question. Right? So today, like, so before starting it, so we have a small questions. What is mean by machine learning? As of now, we have covered it on yesterday's sessions. What is mean by machine learning? Yeah, any answers from a participant? What is mean by machine learning? So it is a subset of AI uh, from the data set, from the past history, uh, it will predict the future, sir. Exactly. The answer is correct. So now, so same thing we are going to do with, right? So machine learning is a subset of AI, but here we are giving an input. Uh, input may be in a like uh, uh, old data or current live data also. Based on that, the machine has to learn. But comes to the deep learning, it is subset of machine learning. So whatever input we are feeding, same thing, but the in a ML model, the machine has to learn something as in a futures, something from an input data or current live data. That futures has to be learned in a ML, learned by in a machines. So that is exact process of ML. But comes to the DL, so system has to extract the futures automatically 
from a past data or its current live data so here how it is working it it, it is working in terms of uh, copying of our uh, brain human brain so we all know that so human brain is having in a combination of small small neurons so each neurons having in a activities like either it, it it could be a storage it could be an actions so everything right so based on this the system was going to take in a decision right so now what is mean by ai so ai is nothing but it is a combination of ml dl as well as theoretical concept mathematical model but thing is it it should be visualized to perception visualized as a human we should visualize that the combination of ml dl it could be in a product it could be a machines it could be a small chip it could be in a controller right so ai will be in a combination of both but so some of the uh, what is it applications of ai also we have mentioned in this diagram so first diagram we have an a chess playing game with a lot against an a machine but do you think that machine also will think like an a human yes of course because the machine is learning based on a human inputs like their mathematical thinking is there mathematical uh, what is it calculation is there logical thinking of human is there as well as analytical thinking of human also there so once machine is learning from a, a what is it different use cases of an a game then the machine will play against an a human but obviously we 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 would conclude that the machine will always win because the machine will think one step ahead of me ahead of human and comes to the second diagram we have an a number plate recognition so there are a place on a road like the simple example is toll gate because they are having an a what is it uh, uh, some code based on a vehicle mirror that will be scanned from an automatic camera then it will detect i mean it, it will it will fetch the information about in a car car number and owner owner details so when when it is arriving for a particular toll gate and when it is going to leave right and comes to the third diagram we have an asset so that is actually an uh, what is it apple iphone having in you know, this kind of features so these are the things and all we are having is an ai artificial intelligence then comes to uh, what are you called like so this same diagram we have explained on yesterday also right so we i will make our machine to be an intelligent but comes to the machine it's learning input and processing it and training the model and produces an output comes to the dl it is it could be in a collection of neurons right so here also we have in a different kinds of uh, output uh, layers like not only the output layers we have in a three kinds of layer to process an input so when the dl plays in a role like 2017 onwards we have an like 2010 onwards we have an a deep learning of uh, 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 introduction into the world and uh, so this fastly growing technology in the current right so here you can see yeah yesterday we have uh, an, uh, a clear picture about an machine learning right so here we have an in this diagram in the left hand side we have an a new input right so where it is getting in a new input because that new input is learned or derived 
from one data sets like fast data from that the new inputers what is it uh, classified in terms of machine then based on this new input the machine going to predict such an out either it may be a flower flowers or it may be an animals it may be in a human it may be in a car vehicle so this kind of information is processing with the help of inputs only right yeah now now we are coming to that uh, main role of today uh, topics what 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 kind of limitation we are facing for an machine learning so any idea what kind of uh, limitation we are facing in the ml why that dl is coming to our part any idea what kind of limitations from your point of view ha uh, sir maybe in the data okay maybe yeah it depends on the size of a data yeah good any others so only data we have it any any others from a participant okay let let's have a small things so machine learning we all knows that it will process or learn or make a system from a past input but one is different is the extraction futures futures from an input in the ml model the system has to learn and then extract the future from an input data but deep learning model we don't want to extract the futures the system itself having in a functionality of automatic future extraction from an input then it gives to that uh, what is it? human brain neuro neu neurological model for an uh, uh, dl then it will be give us an out so what is they actually one small difference on it ml dl both are working as in a same but ml we should like machine should learn and extract the futures based on that extracting futures only we can able to predict the output but comes to the deep learning the system having an automatic future extraction right so once the future extraction is automatic then we are having in a what is it uh, what, 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 what we can say like uh, we we have an a simple uh, simple way to predict us an hour out but think this how the future extraction is going to happen that future extraction is happen with the help of our human brain only human brain model only so it it is a deep, deep learning model uh, follows based on a human brain right yeah now now we are in a exact uh, definitions of deep learning so here so as on a what is the different different diagrams so here you you will see here artificial intelligence is in a overall uh, 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 futures of uh, ml and dl but thing is so here most complex problematical most complex feature extraction method and all we can able to solve with the help of dl only not in a ml so in terms of in other other way we can say that ml will be in a lightweight model but dl will be in a heavy weight because it having in a n number of features to analyze at a time then we we can produce or we can predict as an output right yeah now so deep learning is also in a sub field of ml but so here what will be in a main things it is closely work depends on a human brain you know human brain will bundles of neurons only right so not only this so 
once this neuron is working we have an a uh, one networking concept that is called as an uh, artificial neural network so this is nothing but so here we have an a uh, one hidden layers of before predicts as an output so in the input so we are giving us an a fast data right based on this so we are having an a processing like feature extraction functionalities the feature extraction functionality will have an a n number of hidden layers we cannot say that only one hidden layers to perform one as an in we have an n number of hidden layers to predicts our out right so then last thing is so in the dl model we have an a n number of sub varieties right so that is called as an a multi layer perspectron auto encoders convolutional neural network and last thing is recurrent neural net so like if you read and like as a researchers we we are studying these kind of models or types from an a past publications of articles on some of them they may use as an a multi layer perspectron some of them they'll using in a modification of auto encoders functionalities some of them they may use as an a modified or enhanced versions of convolutional neural network some of them they may use an a recurrent neural networks with an optimized functionalities at last we, i didn't mention here but some of them they may use as an a hybrid neural networks concept for an example they may be in a combination of a multi layer perspectron with an a cnn or else multi layer perspectron with an a rnn or else we can use as an a cnn along with an rnn or else we can use as an a only for functionalities of auto encoders along with an r or along with an c right so this is actually in a base of deep learning right so as of now any doubt shall we proceed right so it's flowing is good so any doubt as of now hello my my voice is audible right yes yes yeah. so now so as i told no like deep learning is the combination of machine learning and the representation learning representation learning is nothing but it is actually in a set of methods that allows machine to feed with the raw materials so it is also kind of input only from that input we are processing with an so many hidden layers in that hidden layers we will we can able to apply an ml models at last we can able to predict like either produce or predict or classify whatever whatever that that will be our output right so deep learning is nothing but the combinations of machine learning along with representation learning clear now so we are in a main part of uh, today's that is how the deep learning works yesterday we have seen on uh, how machine learning will work right so here we will see how deep learning is working only one thing along with an uh, ml model we are working with an uh, different hidden layers that hidden layers will work based on neurons right so in a left hand side so we will have an a uh, biological representation of neurons on our brain like how it is going to receive a signals like 
if you are driving in a bike or if, if you are uh, going to take on a hot water from an a uh, stove how our neurons are spark hey this water is in a hot so if you fall down from our uh, uh, human body we will get an we will get an a pain so same like so it depends on a visualized input our neurons training i mean automatically train ourselves uh, not not we can say as a training it is automatically extracting the futures of uh, input visualized input then it is giving instruction to an uh, our exact brain right so same like coming to the right hand side how our neural networks will work so for an example so so in this diagram so x1 to xn will consider as an input then we have an a layers of our uh, cnn or also rn from that uh, layers it is extracting futures automatically that extracting futures and all we can say it as in a w1 to wn so in this diagram we can for a wo we can say as in a weight futures right it depends on our applications <coughs> sorry excuse me yeah so based on our input x1 to xn we will have an a layers of our uh, deep learning then it is extracting futures automatically then we should like as a deep learning model it have in a two different functionalities one is transfer function another one is activate function right so transfer function will convert your futures into the like processing of multiple futures into that single futures right so that we called as in a transfer function transferring transforming multi field future into narrow down our extract futures of our the project or else our uh, concept at last we'll have an uh, activate function or else activation function so here we should have an uh, x and y values so there if we it it what are you called based on your transfer functionalities that is going to predict in terms of classification in terms of recursion in terms of decision tree right so based on that we will get as an output that will represent us as an what do you call x and y values it may be in a graphical representations also so this is actually an exact working model of deep learning right now so once working is over now we should identify what are the unique features compared to an ml model because ml already we have an futures right so what are the unique features we will have only one thing is automatic future extraction functionalities we have on our deep learning model right then whatever the data we are giving so in a dl it, it allows an a high dimensional data for an a training we don't want to lose an any dimensionality reductions but a ml like we 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 can say directly as an a if you have an a large number of data set we should follow on a dl only right if you have an a like high dimensional data it we should go ahead with an a deep, deep learning only. then what is what will be in a third future us we can able to define as an a higher level futures higher level futures in the sense in terms of dimensionalities or else in terms of figures like in terms of qualities in terms of object in terms of text right it should be derived from an a lower level futures where we where we are going to derive it from an a previous layer 
So now you can say that every layers of VR deep learning, it is automatically connected within a previous layers. Right? Previous layer output will be given to an next layer of next layer input and then it is going to process it. Right? So and then it comes to the fourth, sorry, fifth point. We have an the deep learning model is to solve a real world problems by applying an NLP image recognition, text recognition, speech recognition, right? So here what we are applying advanced model of the NLP natural language process. Because only the DL having in the functionalities of combining your NLP. So these are the unique unique features having on our deep learning, right? It comes to this. So once features is we have, as like like we will have a small questions now. How many ML model we have? How many machine learning models we have? Three machine learning models. Yes. What are they, sir? Supervised, supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement. Exactly. Correct, sir. Thank you, sir. And coming to our deep learning models, so we have an, a three kind of architecture to process it. The first one is type one. So there we have an, a, yeah, some more animation issue. Yeah. So we have uh, three different uh, architectures for our uh, deep learning. Type one, we have a uh, supervised or discriminative deep learning models. And coming to the type two, unsupervised or generative deep learning models. And third important thing is hy hybrid deep architecture. So we all know that supervised learning and unsupervised learning reinforcement also but same mechanism we are going to apply it in terms of deep learning but only thing is the future is going to extract by themselves i mean automatically so that is the only difference then we will have an architecture for a different kind of models right so supervised in the sense we all know that it should be in a labeled data and supervised in the sense we will all have an unlabeled data or else unstructured data so in a dl we have a hybrid it is a combination of supervised with the unsupervised or else we we may combine with an a supervised along with an a like a different varieties of DL, like multi layers, first patron, or else uh, what do you call auto encoders, or else we can call it as a convolution neural networks, or else our end, right? Yeah. Now let's start with a uh, first architecture, like supervised or discriminative deep learning. So here you can see, so it is actually in a why we are calling as in a supervised. Because it should have an a label data for process, right? So label data in the sense, in this diagram you can see here. So image they are feeding, right? So in this image we are having a different kind of dimension we should take as an input for a processing. So dimension may be in a uh, what do you call it? Either uh, height, width, the edge features right or else image size what will be an object in that image whether object is moving or not so so many features it is going to extract it then that will be given to the convolutional in that convolutional for an example first layer we have an a 16 different layers but coming to the loss, at last, before predicts in the output, we will have an, uh, only two or three layers of it. Because what, what is going to happen? It is 
what is it narrow down your future to predict it predict what will be your output right so in a conventional we have an a conventional layer max polling as well as framing concepts like either we can say as in a uh, unit or else a resnet architectures right so there we should have an a one one end we have an auto encoders but coming to the other end we will have an a decoder of for an a futures right then at last your output will be represented in terms of fully connected layers which means that previous layer input is feeding and it is going to predict as an output based on our input image futures it is going to predict in terms of dog or as person cat bird fish or as fox or as inserts right so how we are going to with the help of supervised label should be automatically extract from your input data clear it is in a first model for an a deep learning that will be in a supervised then where we are using in a supervised deep learning model it is it is an applications of facial facial recognition right so let's have in a small architecture also so now you can see so this is actually an input image but do you think that it will have an images of uh, faces no it is having a something a kind of unrelated data for an uh, facial but how it is going to extract it in a few facial recognition in the sense what are, what kind of features we should construct either right turn left turn of a faces and i knows ears right so based on this like even we we should cover us in the mouth chin right so everything we should extract from an input images only right how would us extracting it is extracting as an automatically that is going to feed it into the conventional then it is going to for an a max pooling at loss in a third image it is extracting as an or else it is predicting as an images or it is producing images in terms of fully connected layers right actually this example was already published in the in terms of uh li uh, et al authors it was published in 2011 but what kind of algorithm they have used the conventional neural networks right yeah comes to that let's uh participant any doubt for an a uh, best model of uh, supervised architectures A any doubt mm -hmm. Yes, hearing. Um, what is uh, um, labeled data? Ma'am, ma'am, your voice is not up. Sir, can you explain again Sir, can you hear me? Hello. For this one, label data. Sir, so what is exactly label data? Let's see. sir i can hear you hello sir can you hear it 
computer Yes, ma'am. My messages are audible, right? No, sir. It's breaking. Your voice is breaking. Okay, I'll see here. I can fall coming Hello, my voice is audible, right? Yes, sir. It is audible, right? Yes, yes. Actually, sorry for the inconvenience. Actually, two days we are getting in a heavy rainfall in my native. So I'm having a lot of network issues. Sorry. I think uh, one of the participants asking for a question is, what is meant by label data? What, what kind of uh, futures we are doing, right? So label data is nothing but, if you, for an example, we are giving input data as, as an uh, images. What kind of uh, things we require for processing as an uh, images? Only thing is dimension we require. I think it is audible, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So from uh, image, what kind of, uh, uh, what is it, uh, futures is uh, required for processing in the sense, it, it could be in a uh, dimension, it could be in a width, height, and then images and all, we should, represented in terms of RGB only, red, green, blue combinations. So depends on this kind of futures, we will say as an uh, labels, labels for an uh, input images. So once this kind of futures we already known for an uh, processing, then to be, we should take it as a uh, supervised uh, deep learning architecture. If in the case we didn't know about any, any kind of futures from an input data, like we cannot label it for a particular functionalities, 
that and all comes under unlabeled things i think my answer is uh, satisfied for an participant yes sir it means uh, we have to consider only dimension of uh, that particular object no it, it depends on our processing depends on our project process it may vary okay okay thank you yeah. any any more doubt for an participant we or else we'll continue with an next one yeah now now we will continue like for an example we are in a second architecture of uh, deep learning right that will be in a unsupervised one right so here so the main thing is so we have lot of mathematical things we should process we can call it as an restricted boltzmann machines there is nothing but what are the things and all visualized from a human that will called as a visualized or visible variables from that we are going to extract it by applying different concept that will be feed into that hidden layers of our deep learning once the hidden layers process it then we will get an a final output so this model is exactly current generative ai is playing the role like we can say as an what are the input we are giving like that will be all visualized but in a background how it is going to map it we didn't know that so there our dl plays in a role for processing our visualized variable in terms of hidden variable hidden layers then we will get an a what the body called like the machine oriented out like ai oriented output but that could be an intelligence one we cannot say that oh this is already i got as an output why you are giving us an another time we can we can say for an unsupervised deep learning architecture we can say for an like billboard.com even wherever we are giving an uh, like chat gpt so there and all we are having an unsupervised one whatever the things we are giving that will be in a visualized one but we cannot say that we cannot we didn't know that what exactly going on in a back side right uh here in unsupervised one we have an a one more concept that is called as an auto encoder right so auto encoder is nothing but it it kind of variety of the layers right so for an example we can say as in a dimensionality reductions if you are feeding your input uh, as an images in terms of 52 cross 52 pixels at last if we will get an a 64 cross 64 only it, it is taking small small diamonds and it is mapping for an a one end in terms of encoding and coming to the receiver side it is going to process in a reverse manner it is decoding and in terms of 64 uh, 64 cross 64 into 512 cross 512 we will get it like processing and again it is going to reconstructing on a decoder side while reconstruction maybe we will get as an error or something okay and coming to like what will be in our next topics of today's session is applications of ml right so we all know that uh, machine learning and uh, deep learning we have in a variety of applications the first and foremost applications of dl is the facial recognition not only the facial we will have an automatic machine translation object classifications character 
next generations automatic came again right so here the first applications of dls face here once so here how the facial recognition will work in the sense the all the facial inputs are feeder already in my databases based on that it is mapping our dimensions of uh, any one thing small part once the dimensions of 75 percent is or 80 percent is is mapping then we can say as an oh this image is for an curly or uh, this image is for chinna swami this image is for uh, someone called uh, as a lord the mary or else we can say as an nakshatramina it depends on a futures which is match from our already feed in our inputs already in the which is stored on a data set right and coming to the second applications of dls google lens i think so many of them they didn't know that uh, what is the exact functionals of google lens so here we are applying for a uh, vision based vision in the sense whatever things we are scanning right it is going to tell you like it is giving us a visualized thing like we can say as an unsupervised one it is processing and it is going to give output in terms of a hey, what will be my scan values a scanned objects scanned videos right so it is it may be converting like uh, images into that uh, textures or it is images into the audio sounds right so only one thing is so so many of them they, they, they doesn't know that what is the exact things of the world right so there also our digital model plays on a role and coming to the third application is translation like for an example if you are trying to access on a china on uh, journal website or uh, some other thing the website will be made up of or developed by an uh, chinese language but google having you know automatic translation for once if you open a website in terms of other languages other country languages it will ask for an uh, in a bottom translator into the original language as well as an uh, into that english Right. So here also our DL model plays on a role. Deep learning translations, right? And coming to the fourth, when we have an instant visual translation, if you capture on a particular images, like in terms of other country languages, what would be in a something? So here also, here they are indirectly saying as in a Google Lens, it will convert your things. right convert your pictures to text into audio or else normal text in a your understandable language right then coming to that uh, uh, fifth application is self driving right we will say that self driving will be an easiest to us but it is very critical one the car has to think in a logically even in a critical situations also like if car is parking via our uh, traffic lines suddenly they uh, what is it uh, they make us in a red what is our decision on a particular time how our self driving cars going to take a decision but this car going to be always connected to our satellite nearby modems nearby uh, vehicle networks nearby v2v communications also one vehicle to another communications also it should be connected then only it will be successful right so here also not ml model plays on a role deep learning model plays on a role right and coming to the loss so we have an automatic machine translation so now recently as i as i also i told you like aict having an uh, automatic language translation like from an uh, one state language to other 
or else one country language to other also right if you type a, for an example in a telugu i am typing as an em chestunnaru but same thing it will convert in terms of english what you are doing right in terms of tamil i end up under so it, this kind of things will be happen with the help of deep learning models only we can select in a language also right so machine automatic machine translation right now so we are in the next part so i think as of now no more doubts for in today's session right any doubt as of now so we'll continue right so we 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 will have an next important thing is what are the recent trends recent trends in the sense what are the researches currently going on a deep learning right so one thing is still so many researchers are facing problems for making an a hybrid model integrations hybrid model in the sense some of the researchers they are planning for an ml along with an dl or else dl along with an some more advanced concept of ai or else advanced concept of data science technologies data science concept or data science mathematical things but thing is we will always face if you are going to combine more than one things we'll face an error or challenges for an interoperability right so interoperability in the sense one concept or model going to combine with another so we automatically will face an some issues some challenges we'll face but once you make it as in terms of successful then that will be applicable for all the types or everywhere right and the second thing is so we will face like currently research is all going on in a vision transfer like we can call it as an vr like we will say as a whatever things we are visualizing like this technology is automatically we are facing uh, we, we we can see in terms of uh, in, in a movie called uh, iron man so whatever he is visualized the machine will say that a hey, this uh, nuclear bomb is coming on this speed it will measure it right but that research is in in a future only no one it is introducing in a current no one will have an exact what is it accuracy for on a developing model right and third uh, trends is going on in a deep learning is Ah. self supervised learning pjt ningile pinnale vilichene what is one can you mute your mute yourself right third important research trend is going on a dls self supervised learning which means that a labeled data i am giving but the model has to learn himself for predicting or classifying my output so there also we are facing some kind of challenges in a current world right and fourth important thing is we are facing a neuroscience based deep learning model which means that we are going to combine with a biological with a dl right so for this best example is neuroscience research currently google initiated before 3 years based on this google research one movie is also released like in a tamil that that is called as a mayam so what they are doing in that movie was they are backing up our brain even if you are dead we can able to boost your same characters same biological things in a another one right they are copying our brain in a hardest 
wherever it is going to initiate it we should feed it for an a this is my next target for uh, enabling my brain try and punch all days so that is already going on but it is not happened successfully once it is successful even we may get our abdul kalam back also but who is currently doing research on that our group right then coming to the uh, uh, fifth important thing is high performance nlp models because nlp will be in a most uh, uh, larger computations uh, machines if you want it we should enhance the performance of nlp models right so there also currently research going on along with an idea right now so we we we, we will have in a current research going on a dl but still we will have a question call what are the research challenges still we are facing on a dl model so as per and according to the study of 2007 to 19 research articles we we will fail to make us in a high computational uh, model for an a training phase right high computation in the sense we we, we, we can say as an our my data set would should, should be in a billions of billions from that my model has to make us an efficient training phase right and coming to that second problem is always our ml and some of the deep learning model also will be applicable for in a small data set it it, it won't be applicable for on a larger one but whenever we are going to do on a research our model should be supported for on a largest one only not a smallest one right and then we will have a still we are having issue on optimization optimization in the sense if you have an a high consumption of memory high consumption of computational high consumption of a processor then we should have an some kind of optimization once optimization is successful then our model also will be an efficient one and then comes to that uh, so many of them they are making or developing on a deep learning model in terms of theoretical only not in a practical not in a practical architecture to make our larger data set or larger computational training phase they'll say simply so many of the verticals they'll say as in a it is in a theoretical mathematical format alone they'll make it but they won't develop that exact model in a real time use cases and coming to the last research challenges still we are facing as in so many research or is nothing but time complexity but no one will like if you read in any research article of deep learning or ml no one will have an output parameters called an a timing they just analyzes in terms of accuracy precision recall f measure false positive true negative right so these are the standard measures for an output for an ml or dl model but no one will have an a timing analysis as a researchers whatever the model we are going to develop it or we are going to introduce it one output functionalities or parameters should be in a time complexity this may be you you will analysis for your algorithms so we all know that for algorithm time complexity like big o big omega big theta notations for an design and analysis of algorithm subject we should <coughs> sorry we should analyze whatever model which is developed for your ml or dl we should analyze for a time right yeah now 
so we will have an a one small use cases right so i am giving in a one small task the task will be in a i need to develop an a face recognition model with the help of ml and dl right so we are going to justify it what model will be applicable for an a face like facial recognition right can anyone say like this is our uh, problem scenario what could be in a model for an a ml first of all for a facial recognition what will be our input what is the features we are going to as a model has to extract it and what would be an output in a ml model what will be an in our input sir any any ideas from an a participant for a deep learn, uh, sorry uh, face recognition application what could be our input of what could be our output by using an image is yeah here we could be an image yeah yeah any any others any other the color color texture of the color texture image. of images yeah good any other sir futures face futures which is so okay now 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 i'm going to give a solution for an machine I, learning approach uh, yes ma'am i spark ready yeah good we we will like matching the eyes and skin tone yeah eyes skin right that is also good for i'm going to give in a solution for a ml model first as a model has to define the features called eyes nose ears etc but thing is from these features the machine has to extract the future himself the model has to learn right then only we can able to identify a hey, these are the features are matched then this image is belong to someone then then only we can able to take a decisions right but same applications how we are going to give a solution for deep learning any any idea so as of now we today all we are seeing as an a deep learning okay you know any idea for how we are going to give a solution for deep learning for facial recognition usage of convolutional neural networks yeah with the help of convolution neural network how the future is going to be as an input set for a cnn features features of an image using the input layer and hidden layer and uh, sir is it right yeah we will have an a uh, three different layers ma'am that is also yes, one yeah correct input mm -hmm. and the hidden layers finally we will have yeah. a connected layers of output yes uh, any any more answers for an a uh, deep learning approach okay anyway so we are giving in a solution with the help of deep learning first of all the deep learning will have an a 
the unique features of uh, i mean unique functionalities called as an automatically will find out the features we don't want to mention as an input features of this image if you feed a your input in terms of full images full size or off size or the side post whatever from that image the deep learning having in a characteristics are one important features to learn himself learn automatically or else, sorry not a learn extracting features from that in input images then that will be feed into that as man told no the hidden layers there we have a cnn rnn even we can able to apply an encoders mechanisms right so from that we can able to apply it at last before predicting as an output we can apply an ml algorithm also right finally we'll define or we will get as an a hey, these features are matched the accuracy is this much of input images it is exactly matched with an one person then it is announcing that particular name of the person or name of the images right so same application but we have an a different approach for an a two different technology one is ml and another one is dl right so let's have an a like same thing so let's have an a small architecture now so here so here you can see i'm feeding input as an a my group out of of my colleges or else my school life right then what it is doing it is feeding this images into that input layers from that input layers what it is going to happen it is going to extract the features automatically in terms of patterns so in the patterns maybe in a nose ears chin right side post of a person so so many things will be processed in a input layers again from that input layer we are going to give input to that hidden layers of our deep learning models in that hidden layers one thing is so first we are going to like our dl model is going to extract the features of only for faces face related in a face i will be on a one important things and then nose chin and then lip and then ear right so these are the sample features for an a face that will be processed in a hidden layers one again same will be processed into the hidden layer two they just you make a uh, uh, visualize the easily like how many layers we have in a first input layer and the layer going to reduce for an a hidden layer one and layer going to reduce around a hidden layer 2 right so why we are reducing because we are initially we are taking n number of features and slowly we are reducing that layers into that predicted output right that will be happen in that last one that will be called as an output layer there two different function we need to apply that will be in a activate function activation function right so this is the way how our deep learning model will work right any any doubt any doubt for an a facial recognition application for an a deep learning models now sir Ah yes. My, my voice is audible, right? Yes, sir. Ah okay. So we will continue with the next one, right? So what are the tools for under deep learning, right? So as a researchers, we we have an objectives we have an a problem statements and everything but we may fail to select an a 
exact tools for developing our project or developing our ideas right so for a deep learning we will have an a like so in a left hand side whatever we have that will be in a traditional one like oldest one there we have an a tensor flow theano torch keras blocks cafe cafe 2 maxnet right but coming to here like right hand side we have an advanced tools for an deep learning software or as a deep learning applications so that will be called as an mat convolution networks microsoft cognitive toolkit deep learning 4j and dlib so out of this out of like almost 11 to 12 tools most of them most of them they may use run a tensor flow and some of them like those who are working for an advanced level concept like hybrid level right so in a hybrid level or like uh, we we can say as in a self learning self supervised learning methodologies they we can able to use in a deep learning 4j tools and coming to still like so we should identify what are the future research going on a deep learning models right so here the first thing will be have an a self learning still still so many researchers are failing to have an a self learning concept to make an applications right so if you fail if you make our deep learning models for learning himself to uh what do you call learning himself to make an a healthcare application or healthcare model or else uh, cause or else we can uh, go ahead for an uh, what is it supply chains right if you make it still if you make it that could be an a right and then so so many maybe you may think that deep learning and ml and all it won't be applicable for a security concept but deep learning will be very much beneficial for an a cyber security level because once for an example yesterday we have seen for an aims data breach and reddit i uh, even we can see as in some kind of nuclear data breach also right so if your system your top level government system if you have an a dl model then there is a chance to prevent it before occurring in any kind of any kind of cyber security because deep learning having in a functionality is for automatic feature extractions right once it is there we can able to easily prevent it and then in future we we have an ideal model for an automation of repetitive task like for an we can say as an e-commerce site so there so many things is like if you place an order some person go, going to pick up for a particular order from a shop again it is going to pack it it is going to do on some kind of task also right so their deep learning will plays an a role in future and machine vision right as i told you in einmond concepts and all it will be in a future research only no one currently using but uh, as for my knowledge china is uh, going to release an a one uh, machine vision tool for an a mobile phone as well as an a smart home because uh, as a nowadays we should provide security for our home right and in future that deep learning will be place for an a marketing also hey today i am selling for an a iphone but we cannot say that this month uh, my iphone selling very fastly we cannot say that 
next month or else after three months same iphone will be growing or it is going to sell it sell it in a fast manner we cannot say that right but if you apply or if you develop in any kind of deal we can able to predict it easily like today this product is going to sell in future after six months oh again this product will come into the market at first we can able to right so i think so any 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 doubt on it today's like deep learning research and deep learning models tools for an deep learning any doubt any doubt for an today topics <laughs> Sir, okay. can you tell me about attention mechanism in deep learning models, sir? What, what ma? Activation function or attention? What, what you are asking? Attention mechanism, sir. Soft attention, hard attention. In deep learning uh, model concept, sir. I am not sure, ma, but I'll refer and then tell you for sure. Attention. Okay, sir. Okay. okay sir and uh, one more thing is so as i told you know so so many tools for an uh, what do you call it, for an uh, making deep learning models right so here so i think my website i mean my uh, slide is very visible to everyone right my screen is visible right so i think it is visible to everyone my screen so as a deep learning for 4j so i have an some this is and all open source code we can able to download on your system we can able to run it right so where we just we are going to modify some functionalities on my algorithm i mean existing tools algorithm right so here so these are the like this this is a website for having in a tools for deep learning 4j so here we before uh, what is it uh, developing or implementing any kind of deep learning we should identify what kind of language we need to insert install it on my systems first thing is we, we should depends on a java then we should have an a python some kind of c++ library also once it is done we can able to incorporate it on your either netbeans ide or else eclipse ide or else we can have an a n number of open source like an a and a honda right the spider so so many softwares we have as a open source we just download that particular software and then we need to feed it on your local system then we can able to modify wherever we want it we can able to apply our own optimization or else combination of one or two algorithms that is also possible right so this is only for deep learning for 4j and coming to so some may some some futures some researchers having in a companies idea for combining your dl ml model with an a cloud computing for computing either we can able I, i i think i am going to combine with an a iot with an a deep learning iot with an a ml right so for that also i am having in a some open source tools right so this is actually an some kind of tools available for an especially cloud computing with an some kind of advanced model like iot ml dl even nowadays blockchain quantum computing also even so many of them uh, they are some of them doing research on hdn also software defined networking 
so there are also so many free open source tools available right so for an example right so sorry actually i, I didn't configure any, any deep learning model software but i have a software for quantum computing because currently i'm doing research on quantum right anyway that that also also i'll explain it not an issue so now these are the tools available for an ir research implementations so for an example so here you can see here what 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 i am having yeah so this tool salon you see that so this tool is especially for deep learning based scheduler for stochastic for cloud computing environment right for cloud computing I think my voice is audible, right? Is there any network issue? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, as as I told you, no. So I am having a you know, one software configurations for my advanced researchers that is quantum computing. So what tools I have on my system, I quantum. So same, same steps you should follow for an. every deep learning tools also right so this tool already i am having on my system so once if you click on a particular tools what we have to do is we need to download as an zip file right generally it will be download on your local system as an zip file we don't want to miss on any kind of steps any kind of tools any kind of packages any kind of things right now just i'm opening on my software so i'm already configured on my uh, netbeans ide for my i quantum so here i am just opening it <coughs> yeah so i am just closing all my things so i am having so many projects just to put and minimizing all those things yeah so here what i am having first of all so already i imported my all the files which is download from an uh, i quantum zip file right so if you have an a zip file so i am having enough first of all there is one so if you download that uh, zip file you have an a uh, one file called as an i quantum 1.00 beta versions right so here i'll i may have an a uh, data sets so here what kind of data sets i'm going to use it if you are going to combine your quantum with an a uh, cloud we have an a uh, one data set if you are going to combine with an a uh, four computing with an a uh, uh, quantum there also we have only for i quantum alone we have na some kind of data sets right we can able to see these are my data sets already feeded on my that particular tool right uh, now i am going to see my modules so here i am having a i quantums i quantum examples so every open source file it should have an a two concept called some kind of free defined examples which is run on a configured environment right so here i'm just opening an a 
one source pipe. I'm just going for an I quantum. Running this file. So right. So once you have an, a, this kind of setup, one you successfully made it for an environment, I just I'm going to run it for I quantum example, right? So this will be where it is. Yeah. Uh, where I'm having so I'm having in a package here at I quantum is not there. This with this game. One minute, I have an some error actually. Package I quantum code does he this not exist? Right? Okay, maybe this configuration we have an error. One more software I have intelligent ID. Where also I tried for a configuration. So here I'm having a project. Yeah. So here it will be eligible. So same same set of models, same set of configurations only, right? I just I'm going to right click it, run as an one important files. In the bottom, I, I think my screen is visible to everyone, right? In the bottom, you can see based on my the feeder data sets, my cloud sim is running for an a quantum, right? Quantum machines, quantum uh, configuration already we have done. So here, wherever we wanted, we just modify our code, modify the requirements. So what if what is my VM ID and what is that uh, 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 VM memory size, image size? So everything already predefined one. We just our role is to modify wherever we want it according to our project, according to our the research what we are going to do, right? So this is the way. Once you find out an open source tool. We just download it on your system. You configure it first. Then we just go for an implementation. Then only we can able to get an a succeed output. Right? So this is one, one thing I'm planning to solve it. So anyway, in future, if you have an a some, some more additionally, definitely, definitely I'll show it for my, the deep learning, uh, projects open source implementations also right so any doubt any doubt as of now so any doubt for a future research also if you tell me i'll i'll explain no thanks if you have any any doubt Like maybe you have a doubt on what kind of tools I need to take, sir. Right? If, if you have any any doubt, just ask me. Like. Hello. Uh, yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Uh, in upcoming future, is SCI human computer intervention or interaction would be a good uh, you know topic to go through for the research, or is it have that kind of potential? Yes, obviously, ma'am. Because HCI is most important things. Actually, AI. If you want to learn AI, we should understand first of all how human is going to interact with an emission 
the machine we can say as in a computer but we should understand each and every steps of how mathematically or else logically our computer will think then only we can able to interact with an a human right so right. this is also one advanced research for an upcoming years hci with dl or else data science concept that will Thank be so much. most important man if you are going Thank to you. select if you are in a ideal of selecting my research area just i'll right. i'll give an a blind approval for an hci man human computer interaction yeah any more doubt hello ah yes ma'am um sir can you would you please uh, specify some uh, because sci is a really a umbrella term it has like lot of thing and potential and also it covers lot of things like human computer interaction as well as human to uh, computer to computer and how can we how can we switch up to from human to computer uh, from human to computer to computer to computer or machine to machine interaction uh, like uh, the first thing is we should understand logically first like right. how the machine will think same scenario how our human is think we should take us in a tabular form of how both are thinking then only we can able to get idea for or else get a objective to make an a one research in a hci only thing is we will face an all the time optimization issue ma'am so right. optimization we should because human will have an a more num, a more time to complete an a particular task but computer It, it will take in a less time compared to an a human so there how we are going to place an optimization in a human side so that is also sure. one important research topics man in a hci optimization one of the research for an a research objectives as of now right thank you so much sir thank you for response thank you yes ma'am yes so any more doubt any more doubt actually ma'am indubadi ma'am or else uh, swati ma'am is there ma'am Uh, one question i got is how to start to use eclipse deep for an a deep learning now only thing is like if you download this for an example i am clicking on a deep learning for 4j so here i just downloading in a first code as in a download gif right so meanwhile in the bottom of uh, every code they'll give an a the configuration steps first of all the steps we need to learn it and we need to configure it learn by i mean step by step one thing is we may fail to configure as an exact jar file only so for an example so this error i got no first time i solve it with the help of the jar file but where i am placing the jar file if you click on this one so i am having as an a where is this file only no yeah so here so i am having in a one minute i am having in a jar file where it is change yes fine yeah 
yeah this jar file we need to download from an internet they won't be given inside your zip file so whatever error you are facing at the time of configuration of any open source that's error we need to search it on a google we may find this jar file once you find the jar file we need to import it on your library folder that's it we'll, we will clear it easily and how do we create our own model based on a deep learning concept the first thing is uh, uh, we need to it depends on like it depends on our use cases either you are going to take for an healthcare or else either you are going to take for an some other use cases depends on that we need to design your model what kind of architecture i am going to use it what how many layers i am going to use it based on that we can able to create our own models if you go i mean if you search it once you objective is finalized if you search it blindly on the internet you may get an n number of things but if you think as your own based on your objectives we can able to structureize your model first then only you can able to create without structurizing we can't is there any open source machine learning tool Number of and uh, some of them they won't have an knowledge on source code. so one one minute i'll tell you for another so many uh, already published paper we will get a source code also source code with uh, data sets one minute one minute i'll i'll given a link also
I think I have posted in a, a chat box. Just refer this link. Like, so there we will have an, a project code also. Project code, data set, how they are implementing, where that exact concept was published also. This and all, we have in a starting of our uh, students. Like if you are planning to give your project to a final year students, we can able to give this idea from this link on the right. Right. So this is also one of the uh, input for today. So so we will have an a uh, uh, so many link for an uh, uh, ML DL also there. Uh, one question I have on a like. Is it possible to design project in Google Clubs? Yes, we can. But the thing is, uh, the student has to learn where we want to host our input and where we have we want to uh, get output in terms of graphs. Yeah, yeah, we can. Like uh, MLDL project also, we can able to configure it in a Google Collabs. We can. Uh, we need to search it now for our open source code for college management software. But we will get all the kind of uh, uh, Java, PSP only. We won't get us an AI based. But we can able to modify it. Yeah, yeah, sure, ma'am. I'll, I'll share my uh, PPT to an uh, organizer. They'll forward it soon. They'll upload it in a drive and then say they'll share it. Yeah, we can, we can, sir. We can apply on a optimization algorithm or on Kali on, on a CNN. We can. But the thing is, we, we, we should. Think about your yeah, system configurations and input. Uh, some of them asking for can you share few links like papers co papers with go.com? So now what kind of links you are asking, sir? Tell me, I'll, I'll share it. What is the meaning of novel approach in a research? As we are in a technological environment. So we are not able to provide novel approach as, as like an easy link. But we can able to modify the existing one. We can able to make I think. Uh, Kishores are asking for can you stress on vanishing gradient problems. As of now, we can't, sir. But if you have it, like if you have in a future session, definitely I'll, I'll focus on any one problems on your uh, expectations. Sir, is it possible to collaborate deep learning model with the YOLO tool for our own model? 
yes but yolo is only for uh, object detections or else object movements we can so any more doubt like one one of them asking for uh, uh, can you share some of the links like in a pap paperscode.com so if you share it what kind of uh, uh, links you want it, then i can like uh, indo indomadi ma'am are you there ma'am so so many participants they are asking for feedback link hello sir how yes ma'am yes ma'am salma ma'am how to get data set for research is there any link sir as one common database is actually in a google not only the google we have in a so many website for in a like if you are going for in a healthcare sector we have in a so many government website also sir to download that data sets So any more doubt can you tell some site for data sets any healthcare links data sets it's one minute i'll let it tell Yes, sir. So one link I am sharing for in a healthcare data set. So there I am having in a like uh, a data dot world. There we have in a, a one uh, object is like in a healthcare. Okay. Any more doubt? Dear dear participants, I have shared the feedback link in a chat box. Kindly fill the feedback link. It is considered as an attendance over here. And Chinna Sami sir. Yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. Uh, the session can we um, close the session, sir? Yes ma'am. I say. Yes, ma'am. I have Robert. a doubt. Yeah, yes ma'am. Ma'am, yes. ma 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 in a feedback form. Sir. Ma'am, in a feedback form, uh, you give some one to five ratings, but uh, which yeah. one is highest, ma'am? Number one uh, is uh, low, ma'am, and number five okay. takes the highest value. Based on that, okay. you provide the ratings, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, today um, it has been such an honor to be a part of this wonderful event on behalf of the organization. I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed resource person, Dr. Chinna Sami sir from MLR Institute of Technology. And his talk about the ML and DL gives us to gain a deeper knowledge and also taught us how to apply those in real-time applications. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful um, speech regarding this session. of dl model for future research thank you chinna sami sir yeah thank you so much ma'am thank you for uh, being part of yeah participants this is very very valuable to us sir thank yes, you sir participants kindly fill the feedback link and the ratings 
for one and five is one takes the lowest rating and five takes the highest one. And tomorrow session is of about neural networks application, which is given uh, taken by the Rajas Universe and Sir from industrial expert of Sintra Technologies. And thank you all for joining our session today's session. We will see you in the next day. Thank you all participants. Thank you, Chinna Sami sir, for um, joining our session. Thank you very much. Yes. So, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Now we can leave, no man. Yeah, once you fill the feedback link, you can leave the teams now. Okay, thank you, man. Thank you.